just one word, compassion. This is a staff nurse, Trish, who works on the intensive care unit. Trish was working on the uh, green side, which is the COVID free side. This is how Trish normally is. And she is one of many nurses who are exactly the same men and women who were amazingly compassionate with patients and they gave me uh, that privilege to be able to capture them at work. My name is Ray McCruden. I'm a doctor but also a photographer. I feel duty bound to record this moment in time which has changed us all. From a photographer's perspective it's quite a hostile environment. It's not pretty, it's chaotic. The walls are filled with wires or gas pipes or oxygen leads. There may be instructions for cardiac resuscitation. Um, it's anything but pretty. This is a picture of Emma King, one of our consultants, anaesthetists and intensive care specialists, on the phone to the parents for their young adult child who had deteriorated. This was a difficult and challenging conversation filled with uncertainty about whether this young person was going to make it or not. When patients unfortunately did not make it, it was a bad day. There were tears and there was upset and there was supporting each other, I guess. But the phone calls still had to be made. In other situations, when patients did make it and they were extubated, there were also tears, but they were tears of joy. This set of pictures is taken just outside the intensive care unit. This is the dawning area for PPE prior to medics and healthcare personnel going into the COVID blue area. Depicted are two intensive care nurses who are just starting their night shift going into the unit. I forget that these people have approximately 12 hour shifts. In the beginning, they only had a half hour break. Whilst they're in, there is no eat, no drink, no pee. There is just work. This is on the green side of the intensive care unit and it's just before midnight. I think the one thing that I wanted to highlight from this picture is that even when the lights go down, even when the patients are settled and are asleep, the intensive care unit is pretty full on. It's a hive of activity. Here, the whole team await the instructions from Robin, who is one of our anaesthetists. She is at the head end supporting the patient's head, literally, and she's about to give the instruction to start these sequential movements and moves to prone this patient. These are orthopaedic surgeons, and they are doing proning as part of a timetable activity every single day both in the morning and in the late afternoon for the patients on the intensive care unit. Because their orthopaedic theatres were closed, and they were closed because they were taken up by ventilated patients with coronavirus. Meet Nadia in the background and Esther in the foreground. These units on the bench are part of what has been termed the Thamba Suite. I think the Samba unit is a very grandiose term for what essentially seems to be a small broom cupboard. But this is the linchpin of the screening for COVID for every single patient that comes into the hospital. I thought that a room like this would be very quiet and that all activity would occur in hushed tones. In fact, it was anything but and almost felt like a grand central station. This is a picture of Tom, one of our excellent training grade doctors who has had an extended spell in the intensive care unit. 
here a patient has become tired. I had said hello to him only the night before and here he was tiring and so was tubed and ventilated. There are three people behind him. None are regular intensive care staff. All are visiting and drafted in from other areas. Lindsay on the left is a consultant anaesthetist. Maria is a senior physiotherapist. And Andy, who cannot be seen behind Tom's head, is another consultant anaesthetist. All have been drafted in for full-time active roles on the intensive care unit because there is just simply so much work to be done. I finished this series with a cup of tea. At least that's what I was offered uh, one day on the 12th of February when I was up on the urology ward. And Luke offered to make me a cup of tea, which was excellent until I realised that he was actually doing the whole tea round. Luke isn't an HCA, he's a consultant urologist, and he had been doing this for several weeks. He was anxious to play this down, saying that he didn't want this to be made into anything bigger than it was, but it was very clear from how he described it that if he and his colleagues hadn't helped with tea rounds, for example, in January, when there was a scarcity of HCAs as they were drafted up into other wards, that, in fact, no one would have got a cup of tea. It worked on several levels. It gave the nurses a, a helping hand. It gave a focal point to lift their morale. And, in fact, it gave the surgeons something that they felt that they could be a part of in terms of helping out. It's important to highlight the stress, fatigue, anxiety, but also the compassion among staff. I want to place the viewer in the thick of it to see and feel what frontline staff are going through. But no single picture will do this justice, I know this, but I want to try to tell that story.